let's go back to the study. And, you know, you've shared a little bit about your background for, you know, some folks who don't know. Um, the study that you did, this specific study in 2016 that, you know, we, sh- we played a clip for earlier. When you're going through this process of, with this study, were you yourself expecting those numbers? <laughs> Or were you yourself like surprised as hell when you saw it? And then how did that change your perception and opinion of things? No one was more surprised than me, right? Like I'm not proud of it, but I don't really like the police that much, right? Like if I, I'm going to the airport after this, if they pull me over, I'm gonna be nervous, man. <laughs> like I don't, it's not, I think a lot of yeah. us would be. Um, so I figured this was gonna be the easiest thing in the world, right? People were out protesting and stuff like that after Michael Brown. But, you know, flying to St. Louis and and locking arms uh, was just not my thing. I'm not saying it shouldn't be done. It's just not my thing. So I thought, here's what I'll do uh, to help. I will figure out empirically what's really going on, because we'd only seen a few videos at that point. And uh, I remember going to a colleague of mine and saying, here, let's uh, I'm going to study the police. And here's an idea. And what he quickly told me was, you don't understand anything about the police. So how are you going to be? going to figure out what's going on with race and policing in America. Um, so I embedded myself in police departments, and we can talk about that if you want at some point. But uh, I was extremely surprised. I was sure that there was going to be bias in police shootings. Uh, as the clip said, when I got the results back, I hired new uh, research assistants to do it over again um, just to make sure. But once you have the results, once you have what you think is the truth, given your data— there's no other choice but to go out with it and, and, and try to educate people on what the data actually says. And what is the data? If you can just actually give us the data, what was in the data? What we found was that on lower level uses of force, so when it comes to pushing, up, pushing someone up against a car, pulling a gun, putting handcuffs on them but not arresting them, things like that, there were large racial differences in um, police use of force. So black uh, uh, civilians are 50% more likely to have force used on them in any given interaction. Even when the police say they're perfectly compliant and they're not arrested and there's no contraband, et cetera, they're still more than 20% 20 more likely than white civilians to have force used on them. But when it came to lethal use of force, um, shootings, we found absolutely no racial bias in that in any way, shape, or form. And our data, I believe, is a lot better than what has been um, uh, discussed in the popular press because they're looking at kind of statistical snapshots. They're saying, well, the fraction of black people who were shot by the police is 50 percent, and they're only 13 percent of the population. Ergo, it must be discrimination. Sorry, I don't know if they forgot statistics one-on-one. That's not how it works. Right. What we did was say, look, here is um, a, two people um, are in a situation with police. Their behavior is the same. The other conditions on the ground are the same. Uh, the police decides to shoot one and not the other. Is race a factor? In other words, accounting for everything else about that situation, does race predict whether or not a police officer will pull the trigger? And the answer emphatically is no. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.